anxiety, and uh, uh, we do apologize for the delay because we had some problem with the room booking. But well, here we are now, and uh, it's a pleasure to have everyone here today. And then thank you very much for the speakers today for coming, and then to, to share uh, your insight later on. So first of all, I'll just briefly uh, explain about the outline of the event. First of all, we'll have the panel discussion where uh, I've got like a few interesting questions to ask to the panel, to the speakers here, and then like later on we, it, will, it will be then followed by the Q&A session where you, like that, uh, where you guys can ask about any questions you have regarding like internship or maybe consulting in general. And then after that we'll, we'll have like an opportunity for networking session where we can like actually mingle with the speakers and then we've got like some food and drinks as well. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Let's start the event. So first of, all, first of all, could you each give a brief introduction to yourself and where you actually interned like before? Uh, maybe starting from Alvin. Okay, so I'm Alvin. Uh, I'm interned at Accenture this summer in London, and I'm a final year student studying business maths and stats at MC undergrad. Hey everyone, I'm Max. I'm from Luxembourg. Um, I'm studying management at the LSC, and um, this summer I did an internship at Oliver Wyman in London. Um, hey, uh, I'm Harsha. Uh, I'm third year econ student this, um, this year. Uh, last summer I interned at Simon Kucher, so they're a private consultant. Um, yeah, and I'll pass over to Florian. Yeah, my name is Florian. I'm a third year management student. I interned with McKinsey this summer and BCG last summer in Germany. Like, what was your role during your internship and what was your like day-to-day -day task? And maybe you can start from Florian first, from the okay. other side. So I'll, I'll try to keep it short, um, but it was two, different, two very different projects. The one was very qualitative, that was at McKinsey this summer, and the BCG one was probably, well, one of the most quantitative ones you can get. So if I started at McKinsey, I was doing a digital transformation strategy at a global OEM for a well, car manufacturer basically in Germany. And my role was um, in the beginning just supporting the team for the first three weeks where I was kind of learning about everything. And then I was actually given my own work stream, so that means I got well, I got this own work package that was independent from what the others were doing and I was then running around the client side, interviewing with senior managers, trying to find some answers to, well, basically what they should do. Um, yeah, that was my, my daily business in a sense um, at McKinsey and at BCG I was, I was developing a rare earth elements market model for 2030. Um, so that was researching a lot of demand factors, of costs, of production sites around the world. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, yeah, um, so I, I was only there for eight weeks, so I actually got put on two projects at the time. Uh, the first one was um, for the first month. I was um, I was uh, developing an Excel tool, so an Excel pricing tool for a large nuclear company. Uh, it was um, a pretty large uh, learning curve actually, so I had to learn uh, all the Excel programming in the first week. So I was uh, a few late nights there. But in the second, week, the second uh, part of my internship, um, it was mainly research-based uh, and just basic, basic, basic Excel analysis. Um, it was, it's a slightly smaller company, so uh, the amount of clients is a lot more variable, so there wasn't as much work in the second week. So uh, the, first, the first part of my internship was a lot busier than my second part. So yeah, I had a 10-week summer internship and I was on one project for the entirety of the internship. So um, my team was helping one of the big investment banks to build a credit risk model um, like that the Federal Reserve required. Um, and so um, I was basically responsible of um, like the model testing pro process. So you know, like every model has like assumptions, limitations. And I was like looking what would happen, you know, if you would, would um, slightly change those, whether the model would still make uh, sense. And then I was writing documentation on that, and um, yeah. Alvin? Okay, so um, I was there for eight weeks this summer, and the uh, first week was just training week, so like Excel training, kind of uh, bonding with your fellow interns. Um, I was there for one project, the whole internship, which was um, at a large uh, financial, large building society slash bank in the UK. Where we kind of had to upgrade the, it was a it was a technology and strategy project. So we had to upgrade the uh, HR system, recruitment system um, using technology, and we had to kind of sell it to our client. 
So at the beginning, I was mainly doing my kind of support work, PMO, which is a project management office. And um, I think after that, you have to become kind of proactive and ask for more tasks. Otherwise, you'll just throughout the session, you'll be doing kind of um, support work. So towards the end, I got more responsibility. I was um, going to client meetings. I was um, you know, designing presentations, PowerPoints, and spreadsheets to kind of uh, present to our client, um, and I've definitely learned a lot there, uh, both in terms of the technology that Accenture uses to, um, you know, help its client reduce costs, and also kind of the communication and selling, you know, communication skills to kind of sell your technology and your product to the client. So that was maybe it. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. That sounds really interesting. And uh, now for the third question, like, could you please share about your best aspect as well as the worst aspect of your internship. So obviously we just want to know about the best aspect because we want to know like you know what actually went wrong or maybe what actually went really tiring in during your internship. So maybe you can start with Alvin this time. Um, I think I can there's two really good aspects. I think the first one is that made more of a kind of a social slash living style aspect because um, for the first time you, you as an intern you get the kind of the lifestyle of a consultant. So I was really kind of honoured and really happy that you know, as an intern, I was able to um, commute, travel, like stay in stay in hotels and kind of, you know live the consultant lifestyle. And that means I'm really kind of valued by the team, valued by the company for my work over summer. So that was really a highlight of my summer. And secondly, I think being given the trust to be taken to client meetings, to be actually able to like kind of talk with the client, understand what the client needs, and to be able to deliver a PowerPoint a presentation to the client. I think that's something as an intern that um, you know you probably wouldn't get a chance to in a lot of uh, possibly other companies. So I think definitely that was a um, uh, you know great confidence and morale boost that I was able to do that. Uh, sorry, worst point as well, right? Yeah, the worst point. Obviously we, all, we also want to know what you know, um, what, what, what was worst about that. I think I don't know if it's just essential or a, a lot of consultancy firms, but you really have to be really kind of uh, take your own initiative and proactive in kind of getting the right roles and making sure you reach your potential. Um, because I wasn't given like a set schedule of every day what I should be doing. Like I couldn't just go into the office and sit there and ask my line manager, what, what do I do, uh, what do I do today? I, like every day is so kind of in the, you know, every day is really unpredictable. So I had to kind of really be proactive rather than being kind of spoon fed. I mean, it can be a good thing, but at the start it was quite difficult for me when I had like a whole morning doing nothing. I didn't know what to do. So it's, you kind of had to really um, approach others and take yourself out of your comfort zone, which can be a good thing, but at the start it was quite um, quite daunting. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say like the best thing in my internship were probably the people I worked with. Like I really felt that most of my coworkers were really smart, and I learned a lot from them. Um, like they helped me a lot, you know, with acquiring tools like Excel and other. Like programming tools and also like besides the working hours like we had a lot of fun together so I went um, on a cycling trip in Wales with my co-workers we organized plenty of really really cool events um, and um, yeah so I would say yeah, the people were like partly the best part and then um, something which might be less good is like you, you need to be flexible so I, on the first day of my internship I was put um, on a strategy project in Paris, for which I was really excited. And then um, a few days into the project, unfortunately, they had like some change in logistics. So I was staying in London at the end for the whole summer, which was like at the end I had a great internship, but like I wish I could also have traveled a bit during my internship. Yeah. No, that's okay. yeah. <laughs> Um, I think uh, the highlight of my internship was listening in and actually attending meetings with board well, with the boardroom. Um, you don't really get that in, in any other profession. So if you're a banker, you're pretty much on your desk. Whereas as a consultant, you're, you've just come out of university or, or even at university, and you're pretty much seeing how decisions are made at the top. So I think that's quite unique for a for a consultancy. And uh, yeah, that was definitely the best moment of uh, my my summer actually. Uh, but with regards to the worst part, um, as I mentioned before, it's quite a small company, so like only about 80 people working in London. So uh, it does depend. And uh, summer's not the best time for um, uh, clients asking for um, for work because I mean they're on holiday as well. Uh, so the last, the second part of my internship was more me just doing odd jobs. So 
I just kind of got a bit of every, uh, quite a bit of quite a lot of projects, so it wasn't really the structured uh, structured internship I wanted. And um, but I, I the first uh, the first half was definitely much better. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, the um, business world, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I don't really know what my best moment, my worst moment was. There was kind of well, multiple on each side. I think one of the best moments was actually well, the best things was that I after I deliberately asked for it because in the beginning I was just well assisting colleagues on the project team, but then when I asked them, well, can I actually get some more responsibility and well do some more stuff on my own, I got given this well this work stream, and I was then well they came with me to one meeting, and then suddenly. A day later, I was really surprised because they just told me, oh yeah, actually go and do your own meetings now. And I was then suddenly sitting with people at this company and they were well, 50, 60 years old. Had, had, well, I have no clue about engineering whatsoever. Um, and these people, they were just like experts in their field. And I was just sitting there with them trying to solve their problem with them in their <laughs> meeting. And I just did that for like seven weeks then, basically walking around. And in the end, um, when I left, well, four weeks after, I was still being emailed by my team because they... They were looking for email addresses or weren't sure what, which this per, who that person was that I was talking to because in the end I really had some well some clients that were just talking to me and I think that was for me as an intern quite amazing. Um, probably the worst thing was actually the traveling because um, my Monday morning started <coughs> at four o'clock um, and then they went on to two o'clock so I had a twenty-two hour day on Mondays um, and. In the beginning, it was quite exciting because you get you get these nice hotels, and that has has its benefits, I must say. But then, at some point, you just get fed up with it because, well, if, I'd rather stay like and sleep a bit more than just have a couple of hours of sleep and be in a nice hotel because you just literally pop into the hotel and the next morning you leave again. But so um, I guess that comes with it, and yeah, I think it was totally worth it. Though. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for the internship itself. And. What is the one thing you wish you knew before you started the application process? Well, I, I think the, the thing that would have helped me a lot, and if I may rephrase that question to that, would have been if I would have kind of known how to really prepare. Because um, in the beginning, I, I, like I spent, I applied, well, for Germany, I applied in January because their deadlines are later. And my interviews were then like in April. And in all the meantime, I was basically practicing cases and doing stuff. And I think it was just, um, yeah, if I would have known a bit more, like, the right resources or where to look or what to do, then I think it would have been easier for me to actually do it in a shorter amount of time. Um, now I think I know what I would have done differently in terms of, like, looking where and things. Um, I think it's mainly with the cases. That took most of the time, but, um, yeah. Um, I think the one thing that people should know, I think, is make sure you practice the cases with someone else. So obviously if you, you can look at case studies all you want uh, at a computer and kind of say, yeah, I would have worked this out, I would have, worked, would have done that. But then when you actually recite it to someone else and actually go through a case with someone else, it's quite different. So that's definitely my main bit of advice. So make sure you guys find a, a good case, the case study partner, someone, someone you think is a, of the same ability because then you don't really want to be, um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree with Halsha, like, actually find more than one case partner, like, find a few because, like, everyone is different and you see how different people think and uh, it's easier to progress from that. Um, a few other things I wish I had known, so, like, for consulting, it doesn't matter when you apply, like, for most firms, they have a deadline at the end and uh, you can, like, get your application perfectly, uh, find it and then send it off, you don't have to hurry too much, um, then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, do a lot of cases. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I definitely agree with the case studies, but I think for me, uh, one of the things that would have helped is that at the start, I thought that, you know, if you go through the whole process and you get it off at the end, it's basically, you know, your internship sorted. You just go in there and have a great time. But then you realise it's not the case, because when you actually start the internship, you realise that, you know, you're not being spoon-fed. You actually have to still, you know, um, network, still know people, still kind of have interviews with, with people, you know, um, it's not about getting case like, once you get offer, you know, everything's done, you're going to have a great time. You, you have to keep on working hard, you've got to keep on um, knowing people, learning new things. So before the internship, um, I didn't know that, I thought that once I get in, it's going to be a walk in the park. So that's something I would take back if I could uh, stop again. Thank you. Uh, one more point, um, I think like the 
the most difficult part in the selection process is to actually get interviews. And I think that's when they cut by far the most people. So like, don't only focus on case studies. Really, like, get your CV and your cover letter like as good as possible. Because you know, if you don't pass that stage, there is no point practicing cases. Yeah. And if I can also just add one point uh, about <laughs> applying early, because I was actually rejected by a couple of companies um, because I was applying too late. That was Germany though, so I don't think that, like, well, maybe in London it's different, but like for me it was that some companies were just already filled up. So oh, okay. um, even if their deadline is late and they don't review on, like, well, they might have reviewed on a rolling basis, I don't know, but like, even though I was a month early for the deadline, they just emailed me a week later and said they would like me, but they can't, they don't have any more spaces. Oh, well. so. Um, maybe give them a quick call before. Uh, I don't want to have anyone yeah, feel safe if it's not the case. I think I think <coughs> then there's more um, application done, and then they look at them afterwards. Uh, I think you guys are going until January if you're going for internships, yeah. so you guys have got quite a while left. It's not like yeah. So yeah. I mean, another point about case studies. I think because um, I think you know the fit interviews equally weighted in the interviews. So I think a lot of people do have a big emphasis on case studies, they've practiced a lot of case studies, but you've got to realise that you also have to um, do some preparation for the personal fit interview, so where the interviewer would kind of grill you on your personal experiences, your personal uh, your competency questions, as, and they go into really, really small details. So it's important to acknowledge that um, case studies and fit interviews compose of both 50%, not just case studies, like one or so definitely practice both. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and how many are you in the first year here? Quite a lot. Uh, okay, like, uh, the question is maybe for a second year or so, but it's more like about how do you select the type of consulting like, firm you, you interned with? Like, how do you decide? Because obviously we have like, maybe for those who don't know, we have like uh, management consulting, strategy consulting, technology consulting, economic consulting, and how, how do we actually choose from those options to actually make sure that you can actually fit in the culture as well as the, the workload? Maybe starting from our thing? Um, I think at our stage, at our age, it's more about just trying out different types of consultancy, different companies. Um, um, I think when you're 20, 21, you know, it's, it's not something like I want to do strategy consultancy or technology consultancy for the rest of my career. It's about having an internship where you learn about this type of consultancy, this company, and you decide if it is for you. And if you decide it is, you can kind of return there if you get an offer. No, I'm, I'm the same as Max. I mean, there's no point uh, narrowing your options uh, unless you're sure you're going to get an offer from there. Uh, the big ones. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think um, it was management and strategy for me. I, I'm not interested in technology at all, so like technology is off the table. So um, yeah, just just look, just have a look at what um, each one entails and see which one interests you, and then apply accordingly. Yeah. I, I think it's also really about the interest. I would, I think I wouldn't be a good economics consultant or so. To be honest, I don't know much about it, but I don't know. I do know that. Economics is not the area that I would like to work in that much, whereas the, well, the problems that I heard before I actually applied that like big strategy management consultancies actually solve or what they do or they work, that just kind of tempted me, especially for the beginning of my career. So I did actually also apply to just a quite big number of firms. And then, well, the interviews, they are also, they're kind of a mutual interview. They interview you and you kind of get to know um, whether you like the firm. So I had a couple of interviews um, and they liked me, and I just hated them. So um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it just sometimes happens. Like if they really, if they really pressure you, or you don't feel comfortable, and you do have another option or so, then go with that. And I think it's really about trying it out. And, and I thought this company that I didn't like in the end—I'm not going to mention names—but um, mm -hmm. I thought they would be really cool. But then during the interview, I just did not fit at all with the people. Um, so I would not want to work for them, although they were in, in the areas of management and strategy. So I think it's really about trying it out. Um, Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think that's all for my questions and then I'll uh, let you guys ask <coughs> if you have and then just raise your hand and feel free to ask any question maybe like to all the speakers or maybe to a specific one then the one you will be interested in. Um, how did you guys convey your enthusiasm and passion and your complimentary for consulting? Like how did you, yeah. <laughs> this is like, it's kind of just like a thing that everyone just does, yeah. but so one, how do you... One, one thing you should do, like, all the firms have, like, 
couple of networking events at the beginning of the year. Mm. Go to them yeah. and then write like after having participated in your networking. And get the names. I'm, I'm passionate yeah. about doing an internship here. <laughs> yeah. and do that. Mm -hmm. And then like <coughs> every consulting firm has like a few things, you know, they're slightly <coughs> different. Like, um, some are stronger in that area, some are stronger in another area. Like talk about that, talk about recent projects they've made like for the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I think it's research. If you, if you find a couple of good things you like about the firm, make sure you kind of convey to them that you've actually researched them. So I think that's the, I, I think that's the main way you can share enthusiasm actually. So you're actually interested in what they do and uh, what they've done. So. Um, I think if you, if you link it kind of to what you've done in the past, or so like your experiences link them to what they do, that will at least, it might not show enthusiasm, but it will show that you actually fit there. Um, and that, I think, is weighing up, it, even if you, well, you should sound somehow enthusiastic, but I think after all it's about the skills you bring there and the experiences, so. I think maybe just look up their website, stalk their website, look at their values, their culture, and then just, just put them, if they say like, um, uh, passion, I don't know, one of their values to say is like teamwork, so just put it in your comment and tell them that I'm a great team player, give an example. <laughs> and then, and then just change it for every firm that you apply to. And then just keep the same structure, just change it. Yeah. Uh, tailored to their, to their culture, their values. Okay. Brilliant. And anyone else? If no, okay. When you were preparing for your interviews, which resources did you use, mainly for you know, your case study prep? So, um, I sent off my internship applications like in October last year when I was in second year. Then like in Michelin's term I did like a couple of market sizing questions with a friend who was working in consulting. And over the Christmas holiday, I read Case in Point. It's like a book that you should read, you know. And um, then after the Christmas holiday, I did like 20 to 30 case studies with friends. And then I went to the interviews. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I've, um, I actually watched the uh, on YouTube videos by Victor Chen. So, uh, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to read anything. Um, so yeah, no, I think, I think that was really useful. Um, I was um, I, I I actually got a McKinsey final round, so I used everything else as a practice, <laughs> effectively. Um, I only, I only looked at their specific um, interview structure, um, but obviously, if you're applying to lots of firms, I I would in hindsight probably would have uh, 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 practiced more a, a more diverse range of cases because each firm does do a separate kind of case <coughs> case study. They are they are they're quite different. I like that approach with applying to more firms and then using them. I did that too and I think it's quite good because they actually put you in that situation and they pressure you and no one can really simulate that even if you practice with friends. Um, so I think a real interview or even like if you can get one of the bigger rounds, I, so there's, there's a couple of companies that do actually three or four interviews already like for earlier rounds. If you just get those, even if you don't succeed, you have this experience and you have done the cases. Um, I think that's quite valuable. What I did was really look for people who had a wealth of experience in doing it, like people who had done internships at three consultancies, well, or who just done lots of lots of interviews, or who were friends with consultants, or something like that, and really who who knew how it worked. Because, well, in the beginning, it's it's I think it's fine if you just practice with anyone, but then later, the more you do, I think you need people who who know. Well, at least as much as you do, or even more, because if you get pushed um, further, that's that's what you eventually want to have. Yeah, um, so yeah, just practice lots of case studies, um, competencies, but I think also before you interview, just just relax and just have a good night's sleep, because um, the worst thing is that you've done all the preparation, done all the case studies, but on a day, you, know, you stop panicking or you don't perform as well as you could do. So just just um, you know, just relax on a day, just take it easy and... Uh, you know, show the potential through your case study practices. Yeah, no, I definitely second that actually. I think with consultancy, consultancy interviews, it's more a, a test of intelligence as opposed to banking, which is a lot more, um, I've always wanted to be a banker because whatever. With consultancy, they are literally looking for aptitude and you can only show that after being well, well relaxed, well slept. <laughs> so let's just make sure, yeah, make sure you're not tired when you go in. <laughs> it's also like a minor preparation thing. I did um, like do a lot of mental calculations in your head while walking to school or whatever, you know, before the interviews, so that you can calculate 52 times 48 or 2% or 763 in a second when the guy asks you. Um, and like, you know, I, I, 
I guess it helped quite a bit to do um, <coughs> those calculations beforehand. I, don't know. No, I agree. I think, yeah. um, especially if your degree isn't as numbers based mm -hmm. as uh, well compared to the rest of the uh, the other applicants, um, yeah, I would just make sure that you you guys were up to scratch. It's not really. It's like more of a cutoff. So they kind of look at. Uh, is this guy decent with numbers? They don't like give you extra credit for being really good with numbers. Yeah. So yeah, and you don't need to know complex maths, but you need to be able to do like m multiplications, percentages, stuff like that, really quickly in your head. I was trying to estimate how many rubbish bags there would be along the road or so, and just trying to find a structure of how to come up with it. Yeah, I did. And it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 your answers after this. Um, no, really, just if you, if you if you walk around somewhere or so, like for example, if you go to Pret for lunch. Try to estimate how many customers do they have today, or something that you just, and then just don't say, oh, it's seven thousand customers today, but really try to to identify, okay, so how could I do this? Or so they probably have, they, how how many hours are they open? How many do they have an hour? We might have to segment by different hours, or so that you really just try to get this structured approach. That helped me a lot in actually then doing well in the initial structuring part of the cases, um, and yeah, then the math. If you just do that, you can use your time on the tube, on the commute, on the bus. Um, anyway, you can use it really well. Yeah, no, it's, it's about working out the structure. So in the interview, they don't care if you if your answer is like out by a scale of ten. They don't really care. They just they just want to see whether you got your process right. So yeah, just like um, as Florian was saying, just think think of a question, try work out a structure for it, and then you guys will be sorted. And you know, if you make a mistake in a case study, so like don't panic if you just found out like I've just gone to number wrong. Like don't don't. Don't just panic, don't swear on anything, just, just keep calm. <laughs> just, just keep calm and say, okay, I think uh, I made a mistake here. If I go back a step, let's work, work out from here. Because in one of my interviews, uh, uh, I made a mistake in a case study with terms of the x and y axes for one of the charts, and I kind of mixed them around. And then about five minutes into the case study, I found out. In my, my mind was like, oh, like, I'll just swear. And then I was like, okay, let's, let's, just, let's just take it back one step. And then I say, I made a mistake here, but if we switch it around, it should have been this. And then the interviewer was quite impressed out, you know, you can remain cool, um, you know, despite making a mistake. So making mistakes is not the end of the world. You can even get offers with, uh, with making mistakes. Uh, I learned that during my first interview, but I just screwed up big time. I was so nervous. I couldn't do like simple calculations. What's the percent of 50 anymore? And I just went totally off with that. And they still like me for some reason, so <laughs> um, don't panic if you do something wrong. Really. Yeah, and take a hint if the uh, interviewer says maybe we should go down this route. So, but, so if the um, if the interviewer says that, it's probably because you're parking down the wrong tree, uh, and he, he, he wants to refocus you. So don't don't like overall him and say, no, nah, I think this is uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is interesting. All right. Uh, anyone else? Well, there's just one question for Corinne and Max to start. But like in general, I think any degree at <coughs> see, um, it's good if you want to be a consultant. Like this summer, I uh, like some of the other interns uh, studied Latin or chemistry or whatever. So it doesn't really matter what you do. I actually sometimes wish I would have done something a bit more quantitative than management. Like this summer, everyone on my project had like a master or PhD in like econometrics, mathematics, or physics, and so like I was struggling a bit, you know being a management student, so like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it really depends, because um, on my project, there was, well, we were all business students. The others were also really smart, like they had done Oxford, <coughs> Yale, or Harvard and stuff. But um, after all, what I think benefited me was just that I had this, well, different, different pots of knowledge that I could just tap into. So when we were talking about like some digital strategies, I had some idea of like information systems or so. Not a really deep one, but sometimes that was actually enough to impress the client or to be better than my other people who had not done anything in that area. You learn a lot on the thing, so um, I think it, it really depends on what you do. Like there's yeah. projects, like my first one at BCG, I was, I was doing so much quant work there, and then my second one at McKinsey, I wasn't doing anything there. And I think the management degree displays that, but as Max said, any degree goes. So you probably don't have much of an advantage, apart from maybe for the interviews that you might have this a tiny bit bigger pot of subjects that we might have some idea about, but I think everyone can succeed. Thank you. Okay, so in terms of the fit interview, I think it's about whether you fit their culture and whether you, your experiences, you know, are conveyed to you as a person and show that you're a good fit for the company. So <coughs> one thing I did you know, before a lot of my interviews was that I have my CV in front of me and I have a like a notepads and like a blank, blank sheet of paper. So I go through each work experience I've had, my education, my extracurriculars, 
and I will try to just jot down notes on like, what did I do in each of these, what did I do in this extracurricular activity, what did I learn, what skills did I convey. Then once I wrote it down, I will just like, kind of recite it. So if the interview asks me, so tell me about teamwork, and I can go to say, in my first year I did an inside day at this company and we had a, comp uh, we had a teamwork competition and what did I do in that, so just kind of recite it. So just kind of know what you've done in the past two years, um, what, how those experiences have helped you and know those in really good detail because if you lie or if you try to kind of um, try to just try to go with the flow and try to make up something, uh, I think the interview can spot it because unless they're, they're in HR, unless they're in HR, I think they're, they're going to be really kind of really smart in these kind of things. <laughs> uh, they, they, they can tell, they can pick out if you're if you're trying to waffle or trying to go into another tangent. So definitely be detailed and say specifically what you did and how that makes you a good candidate for their culture and their values. Um, so definitely spend. I would say spend equally as much on the fit interview as a case study because a lot of people do so well in a case study, they're so analytical, but when it comes to competency, you know, they haven't prepared enough and if you fail because of that, I think it's a great shame. Yeah, I think they, they put a lot more weight on the person when it comes to consultancy because they've got to put you in front of a client. Uh, that's, I think that's the main difference to banking. So with banking, what they're looking for is can I, can I stand working with this guy in the night, whereas in consultancy they're looking they're looking at loads of things, uh, but I think the main thing is, can we put this guy in front of a client, or this girl in front of a client, and actually, uh, w would they be able to do a good job? I think that's what you've also got to have a look at. Alright, brilliant, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else? How important is being flexible in the case of the portion of your interview? <coughs> so you hear a lot of the times, like, oh, yeah, we use frameworks, like, oh, <coughs> take each case by case, but, um, like, how much leeway do you get to be creative when answering that? Cases, cases. I mean, it's all about being creative. Like the, I only use the frameworks as like a backbone in case that like I kind of panic, you know, when I don't find a solution. But usually, uh, you know, I try to find a structured solution on so a case by case basis. Yeah. yeah. For for me, I think I start structured. So I, I give them a, I give them a structure that I I want to use, and then and then once you've got the backbone, as Max said, you can kind of just branch out. <laughs> I think, uh, like, never apply full framework, it, well, or never even call it. Like, if you say, oh, I'm going to use Portis 5 Portis now, um, no. Um, <laughs> what, I, what I did in mine was literally that I just used, and that's also the advice I was always given by consultants before the interviews when I had these kind of training sessions, was to use these frameworks just as an, as an idea to structure your thoughts. So if you, for example, have these different frameworks, and then you just see a case, you might recognize, oh, yeah, like, this aspect that I learned from framework X, that might be applicable here and from framework why I could maybe use this. So really merge them in a unique way. Um, obviously there is certain frameworks if you want to call them like that such that profit equals revenues minus costs. I wouldn't call it a framework because it's something that's, that's just, well, <laughs> that is something to structure your thought as well. But um, if you break it down to those tiny bits then you can apply those. Like for example if that's a framework for you, you can apply this profit framework sometimes. But Otherwise, like, don't apply a full, full blown one, but just use it to guide your thoughts. <coughs> um, I think most case studies it will test your knowledge on, on both the analytical and kind of structure part, and also give you some leeway on where you can kind of demonstrate your creativeness or your innovative ideas. So, like, in one interview I had, it was like um, the interviewer would lead me on. So they asked me one question, saying, "How do you do this?" And you had to follow a structure to get that answer. The answer was fixed, save for a number. But then the next question they would say, um, you know, do you, say if I was a client, what would you say to me if you met me in a supermarket? Um, so then you have to be kind of creative and have some sort of ideas rather than just saying, you know, give the structured standard answers because that's not going to impress the interviewer. That doesn't show that you're thinking outside of the box. So just getting the right balance between the two. Also, if you're applying for internships, like anyway, most of your, in or like a lot of your interviews will be like market sensitive stuff like that, yeah. you don't really need to frame That'd be quite nice. Yeah. Is there anyone else? How do you research a company? So when you look at specific publications, specific projects that they work on, that you heard about through networking, or what do you do? I think just scour the website. If, um, I think you, you get a lot more at recruitment events, so they usually put in a lot more information at recruitment events as opposed to the website, so. There's a lot of gold on those presentations. If you, I don't know, I don't know if any any more companies are doing any more uh, recruitment events, but a lot of the times have a uh, pretty specific information that you can definitely use. Yeah. 
I would, I would say website definitely. You can use press as well. like you just search the Enrico company on the web. You might find some press releases. If they put something in the press, there's a reason for it. So they're probably proud about it or it's something they they feel is valuable like valuable about them. And so that's what I use. And then like talking to people is really good. If you have some people who've been there, who've done it, they usually have these these things that you don't find on the website that might be what distinguishes you from the other thousands of people in the club. And um, obviously network as well, I think um, um, I used to think networking was important, like you can just go to an interview, you, you get to the next round and you don't actually know people, but if you do network, if you do get some names down, if you put on a cover letter, if you do bring it up in an interview that this person inspired you at this event, and you show that you actually have interest in their company, you actually took the initiative to go to their events and speak to one of the uh, members of the company, so definitely um, networking, so if you, there's any career events or like LSE does a lot of these and our society does a lot of these as well so, <laughs> so, um, so yeah so it's really important. Jordan, yeah. I think having a basic structure, um, having like your educational paragraph, your extracurriculars can be similar but depending on the values and the culture of the company you may change like if you get rid of one extracurricular activity adding another different one that conveys uh, your initiative if that's one of the uh, values of the company. Um, so yeah, so just having a basic structure, um, but definitely double check before you send it off because the worst thing is if you're applying to McKinsey and then you say, oh, I'm so happy to be applying to BCG. <laughs> so, so, so double check, make sure... It's easily done, it's easily done. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to say this, but I'll do make a mistake of, um, you know. And, and also, I think another um, tip, um, I heard about this time, so one person applied to, like, uh, they applied to... What, what, one of the Kinsey Bank BCG and they attached their CV and the CV name was JP Morgan CV yeah. so, 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 so definitely like when you name your CV you can cover letters to make sure it's like the company and then CV you just have to cover letters so never make any, any mistake like that because it's going to make you... Or even the company out, that's the safe way I guess <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. And how about the others? Is it this, do do you do the same thing with me? Yeah, uh, I I have a base like about myself, about consulting in general, and then I have like a paragraph about the company. Um, so yeah, just change the paragraph for me anyway. <laughs> I think it depends on how closely related they are. Like for example, if you probably apply if you apply to Exchange, Accenture, and McKinsey now, yeah. you might have to do more tailoring to the companies. Whereas if you apply to BCG, Bain, and McKinsey, that one paragraph will probably be fine. Um, but generally what Alvin said I think is totally valid. Like if you just look at what they're looking for on their website and just write them in the list and check if the cover letter kind of addresses these or so, um, that's fine. But like don't write a new one for every everyone uh, for every firm. Like that's just unfeasible. But make sure that you have this kind of this paragraph about why consulting why the firm, that that's actually tailored. Alright, brilliant. Uh, so just to finish up, uh, I've got like uh, one question. Could you please uh, Tell us like one word representing your like your internship, like just one word, and it could be anything up to you. I'll give you ten seconds, and you'll start from for me. And it cannot be the same; it must be different. Can I start? Okay. I got to think of anything. I'd say it's insightful. All right. Well, what do I do with one word? Uh, the probably like a. Fluctuation. <laughs> so yeah, I had a really good beginning, uh, pretty pretty boring end. So. <laughs> All right. And Max. Fun. Fun. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> and Alvin. Proactive. Yes. Okay, that's cool. And I guess that's it for the discussion. And then after this, we will have like a networking environment. If you have any questions, then you can just do. Guys, uh, we've also got like a uh, Instagram account for our Sea Consultancy Society. So if you guys wanna like follow the account, and then maybe if you have like any questions or any feedback for our events or anything else, you can just post your comments and questions. Also.